Hey everybody, this is my 20 long open topped office tank and right now I've got a German blue ram who's in the back left corner underneath the heater and he has some sort of infection or something, one of his eyes starting to pop out a little bit and so I'm medicating the tank but in addition to the medication I'm also putting aquarium salt in the tank just to ease the stress on the fish a little bit. And so I thought I would shoot a quick video talking about aquarium salt because it just gulls me to see how much aquarium salt costs when you go to buy it at the pet store or even if you buy it on Amazon, uh, if you buy it under the name aquarium salt. So aquarium salt is not the same as marine salts, the stuff you would use to make either brackish water or to make up a saltwater tank. Aquarium salts is just sodium chloride. It's just table salt but it doesn't have anything added to it. So when I've been looking around, I've actually been doing some price comparisons just for the purpose of shooting this video. And usually when you see the little containers of aquarium salt, you'll see them in the little uh, paper cartons like the old school uh, milk cartons where you sort of fold the top back and peel it forward and it gives you the little sort of pour spout out the front. And if you buy the one pound containers, you're looking at about three and a quarter. If you buy larger containers, you'll spend a little less than that. And on Amazon, I actually found a bulk container. You can actually buy a 50 pound uh, package of it. And that brings your price all the way down to about a dollar a pound for the salt. But then you got to pay about nine dollars in shipping on that one. Or you can go to Walmart and you can spend 24 and a half cents a pound and get plain salt. And that's all it is, is sodium chloride. Now, it does have an anti-caking agent in it. And I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about that because I just did some research on it myself before I shot this video to make sure I knew what I was talking about. Uh, most salts will be iodized salt. And that's what we're trying to avoid here when it says plain it means that it does not contain any uh, iodide. or Potassium iodide is more likely what would be an iodized salt. Now, I have understood that the amount of potassium iodide that is in iodized salt is so small that if you were to use it in your aquarium, it wouldn't matter anyway. But I always steer clear of it because non-iodized salt is plenty easy enough to get a hold of. You just buy plain salt. Now, when it comes to the caking agents, as I was getting ready to say, there are different types of caking agents you can uh, find in salt. And the one that is in this salt was an agent that I have never seen before, which was called yellow prussiate of soda. So I looked it up, and the chemical name for that is sodium ferrocyanide. So it is sodium, iron, and cyanide all bound up together. And yes, it is that cyanide all bound up together. But because it's bound up with the iron, it makes it harmless. And because it's such trace amounts in the salt, it's likewise harmless. Uh, it also has a very low toxicity for a cyanide compound. So all in all, there's nothing to really worry about with the uh, caking agent that will either be called yellow prussiate of soda or it'll be sodium ferrocyanide. Now, I've never seen this before, but apparently it's a very common anti-caking agent. And I will go uh, a step further in saying that I think it's safe to use, not only because I've used it many, many times in my aquariums over the years. I always buy this kind of salt rather than the expensive aquarium salt. But I've also been told uh, by a lot of different people over the years that if you really want to be sure that you're using a nice pure salt, you can use kosher salt because uh, due to kosher standards, it has to be pure salt with no additives in it. And I just looked that up and that does hold true for the uh, potassium iodide, but kosher salt is very specifically uses the yellow prussiate of soda or the sodium ferrocyanide as an anti-caking agent. So this essentially is the equivalent of kosher salt. Now, I doubt it's had a rabbi do, you know, whatever the rabbi does to make sure this is officially considered kosher, but it's the same as kosher salt. It's pure salt with a little tiny bit of sodium ferrocyanide as a anti-caking agent. And so for 24 cents a pound, 
you can get that rather than going out to your pet store and spending, you know, two or three or four dollars a pound to buy pretty much the exact same stuff in a fancy carton that's labeled aquarium salt rather than table salt. But that's the long and short of it. Aquarium salt is nothing more than sodium chloride. It is just table salt. And if you really want to make sure you're not um, putting any kind of toxins in your water, then make sure you get the non-iodized or the plain version. And then don't worry about whatever type of anti-caking agent is because whatever it is, it's going to be so small trace amounts of it that I don't think it's going to really be of any concern. It certainly hasn't been for me over the years. So there you go. There's a quick tip on what kind of salt to use in your aquarium, although this video did run a little bit longer than I expected it to. But make sure you subscribe and you won't miss any of the updates on this tank or anything else I've got coming up. I am going to be shooting a video about activated carbon here uh, in the very near future too, so you don't want to miss that or anything else. So thanks again, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.